Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're going to do the real review of the LG G4 Now I'm going to start the video by answering the number one question that people have been asking me all week is if you got a G3 Should you upgrade and get a G4? And my simple answer to that is yes. This is a legitimate upgrade You got a better display on the G4 You got a smoother UI with less lag you got more features such as quick charge and you got a way better camera all right so this definitely justifies the upgrade now as usual like I do with any of my other reviews I'm gonna start with everything I don't like first and then we'll get into everything that I do like so let's get right into this first first thing I don't like about this phone is the button placement all right I'm not a big fan of the buttons on the back now is that a big deal no not really it's something that you'll definitely get used to it does have a few benefits, but it's just not in the right place. When you pull your phone out of your pocket, your thumb is usually right here. So that's the place for the buttons. Now, of course, you could double tap to turn your screen off and on. You know, you, there's other features to get around that, but I'm just not a fan of having the volume and the power buttons on the back. I'm just not feeling that. You might like it, though. You might like it, and even if you never used buttons on the back before, if you never had a G3, you're coming from an Android phone like um, the S6 or maybe the S5, Note 4, maybe you're coming from an iPhone, you only take a few minutes to get used to this, but it's just, it's just not my cup of tea. Not really feeling that. Now, like I said, you could use the double tap to wake the screen and all that, but not really feeling the buttons on the back. Next, the speaker on the back. Now, y'all heard me say this before. This is the absolute worst place to put a speaker. Now, think about it like this. When you're holding your phone, now I'm righty, I'm right-handed, so look where the speaker's at when I'm holding it like this. Now, of course, when you're watching a YouTube video, you'll be holding it like this. So, yeah, that's fine. But what happens when you're watching videos on Instagram that you can't put your phone into landscape mode? You're going to be holding the phone like this, and you're going to be trying to have to manipulate it so your speaker is not covered. So, speakers on the back, Worst possible speaker placement, definitely not feeling it. Next, now this has to do with the leatherback version, which don't get me wrong, I'm definitely feeling the leatherback version. I'm probably going to pick that up on Friday from Sprint. But the thing about the leatherback version is be careful. Now, if you like me, y'all know I'm a caseaholic. I have a thousand and one cases for all of my phones. You're going to have to be careful with the leatherback version because a lot of the cases that they make for the LG G4 aren't going to fit with the leatherback. Now, I've been browsing through different websites. I do see they make some leatherback specific cases, which is cool. But the basic cases that I like, like the UAG and the Spigen and the Verus cases, they're not going to fit unless you have this kind of back. Now, there's an easy fix to that. You're going to be able to go out and buy an aftermarket back, or you can buy one of these backs from LG. That's cool, but it's just spending more money. All right, so that, that's just something I don't like about the leatherback version. But if you're one of those people that you don't use cases anyway, then you're really going to like that leatherback version. You're going to like that. Me, personally, I, that's one thing I'm not really feeling. Next. Now, people are going to say I'm being picky and being petty and all that, but this is something I just got to mention. Real quick also, keep in mind that the whole purpose of this review is not to try to find out, you know, what's the best phone on the market. You want to find out what's the best phone for you, what's going to fit your needs. So just because I don't like something, it might be something that you like. I might like something, and it might be something that you don't like. So just weigh the pros and the cons, watch my video, and then when you finish, watch a hundred other videos too, and then make your decision. That's the whole goal of this review game, is to help you make a decision. All right, so let's get back to the things I don't like, and like I said, this one is a little bit on the petty side, but I got to mention it. No fingerprint scanner. Now, I know what you're saying, oh, well, LG never had fingerprint scanners, so what's the big deal? Yeah, you're right, that's not a big deal, but you got to keep in mind when you're about to spend your money, there's other phones on the market. S6, S6 Edge, you got the iPhone, iPhone 6 Plus, you got the Note series. There's other phones that do have a uh, fingerprint scanner. Now, that might not be a big deal to you, but to me, it's a huge deal. If you look at any of my phones, you'll notice that I never use uh, lock screen passwords. I never use that unless I'm going somewhere to a bar, maybe a party or something where I know I'm going to get drunk and there's a chance that I'm going to lose my phone. Maybe if I'm on the bus or the train, and I know that once I lose my phone, it's completely lost. Yeah, then I'll put a, uh, I'll put a passcode lock screen like that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I never use a lock screen. I like to just open my phone and immediately get right into it. So now the thing is, 
when you're using a fingerprint scanner on a phone, such as the S6 or the iPhone, you never have to worry about taking your lock screen password on or off. It's always going to be on, and it opens up basically without even thinking about it. So let me grab just just to give you an idea what I'm talking about. You see my S6. Now my S6 stays locked, but all I got to do is rest my finger on it, and it pops open. So this way now I always got my phone locked. I never have to worry about oh did I forget to you know put a passcode lock on before I went out drinking and I lost my phone. Did I forget to lock it? Fellas, that's in a relationship. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now you could always have your phone locked and you never have to go through those little petty arguments about um, why is your phone locked. And fellas, it goes the same way for ladies too. Fellas, now look, we, you, we know you're not supposed to be looking through your partner's phone and all that. We know that. But if you look through your girl's phone on Monday and everything's fine, then she goes out on Tuesday night to a, you know, a bar with her friends and then Wednesday all of a sudden her phone is locked. You know, it's just going to put that negative connotation in the air. It's going to set a negative vibe. You don't need that stress in your life. All right, so for me, fingerprint scan is a huge deal. After all this new technology that's out, I, my main phone will definitely have to have a fingerprint scanner. Now, for your backup phone and all that, you do whatever you want. Like I said, it might not be important to you, but that's important to me. All right, so no fingerprint scan on this. It is, it is what it is. The technology is available. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well... LG, you know, they're going to be copying off Apple or you know, they're going to be copying off Samsung or whatever. My point is this. All right. When you're buying a flagship phone, you want it to have all of the features that every other flagship phone has. OK, so that that's that's something that you want. You're about to spend your hard owned money. You want to have all of the features that everybody else have. You want to go somewhere and this person got a fingerprint scanner on their flagship phone. You got one on yours. So I don't really care. I'm not really you know, into all of this brand loyalty. I want LG to copy off Samsung. I want Samsung to copy off Apple. I want everybody to copy off each other and until we have the best phone on the market. Next. Now, this is another thing that people might say I'm being a little bit petty, but <laughs> you don't have the premium build feel to this phone. Now, even though it's an upgrade from the G3, because now you got the, the metal on the sides, you still got this plastic-ish back. Now, you go to LG's website and you read the spec list and they're going to say that the uh, back is metal and plastic together. But when you feel it for yourself, you don't feel no feel of metal to it at all. It just feels like a standard piece of plastic and it has this diamond pattern that I'm not really feeling on it either. All right. So you're not going to get that premium build feel, which is important to people that don't use cases. If you don't use cases and you had an iPhone 6, once you hold this and you hold the LG G4, you're going to notice the difference. One's going to feel... Now, when I say cheap, I don't mean cheap, you know, as in garbage, but one's just going to feel a little bit cheaper and one's going to feel like a premium quality phone. And it's the same thing when you hold S6 Edge or S6 or even especially the M9. Aluminum always feels more premium than plastic, in my opinion. Now, everybody's going to have their own opinion. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. But I think this phone is just lacking that premium build feel to it. Okay, so that's that's it. Now that's that's the things I don't like, and like I said, I was being a little bit petty and picky, but the point is I gotta throw this stuff out there because I'm trying to help you make your decision. All right, now let's talk about everything that I do like. Now I just said I don't like the build; it doesn't feel like the premium build, but that doesn't mean I don't like the build. So this is the first thing that I do like, which is the build. It's a definite upgrade from the G3. Now you have the metal around the sides, so when you're holding it, it does feel good. And like I said, the buttons on the back, that's a double-edged sword because, yeah, I don't like having the buttons on the back. But in some ways, I do because, say you're on a crowded train or you're on a crowded bus or you're in a nightclub or something. And you're somewhere where you want to be holding your phone tight. You don't want somebody to bump into you and knock it out of your hand, especially on the bus or the train. You want to hold your phone tight, somebody to run by and snatch it out of your hand. You can hold this phone as tight as you want and you don't have to worry about accidentally pressing any buttons. Now, I'm a big, heavy-handed kind of dude, so that happens to me a lot. When I'm holding my phone tight, I end up pressing the button on the side by accident. So the buttons on the back, even though I'm not feeling that placement, it does, it does come into play as a bonus sometimes. All right, so that's my first thing I do like is the build quality. It definitely is a step up from the G3. If you look at the G3, it's definitely a step up. All right, the build quality definitely, this one has more of a squarish look to it. It definitely looks better than the G3. Very similar, but it looks better and it feels better in the hand. All right, so I'm definitely feeling the build. Next, the screen size. Now, size matters. Any lady would tell you. <laughs> I fellas don't believe the hype when they tell you that size don't matter. Size does matter. And it matters to me when it comes to phones. Now, 
Phones like the Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge, as much as I love those phones, they could never be my number one phone because it's just too small for me. All right, a five-inch small, uh, a five-inch phone is just a little bit too small for my taste. Now, 5.5 inches, that's pretty much the sweet spot. It, personally, I, I need a six-inch phone. That's why the Nexus 6 will probably always be in my top three until something comes out that's about six inches. But 5.5 inches is a great size phone when you're on Facebook and you're reading those long you know, three-page essays that people leave under the comments. You don't have to keep scrolling all day when you're on Instagram and you want to check, you know, all your comments under your un, under your pictures. You know, less scrolling. The bigger the, the bigger the screen size, the less scrolling you're going to have to do. And especially if you're using this phone for business purposes and you're looking at a spreadsheet or something, you'll be able to see more of the spreadsheet. So that's another thing I like about this phone is the size. 5.5 inches, yeah, I'm feeling the size. Next. Let's talk about the display. Now you got the uh, Quad HD Quantum IPS display. What does all of that mean? If you don't work for LG, then who knows? Yeah, nobody knows what that means. It can mean anything, all right? The bottom line is, it means that the display is beautiful. All right, the display is beautiful on this phone. All the blacks look very dark and black. All the colors are vibrant. They pop out at you. Now, I don't want to turn this into a comparison video, but I do got to bring up other phones every now and then because I'm trying to help you make your decision. So, I don't know. When it comes to display, I still think that the Galaxy S6 has the best display, but this one is right there, close second. All right, this Quantum Quad HD XYZ display, whatever it means, it's looking good though. It's looking beautiful. Only one downside to this is when you're outside on a really bright sunny day, even when you put the brightness up on max, you're still going to have a hard time seeing the display. Now, that's pretty much with every phone. Every phone, when you're out in direct sunlight, it's going to be harder to see the screen. That's just something I got to mention. But in the house, in your job, at the gym, wherever you're at, this display is just crisp and beautiful. All right, beautiful looking display. Next, the camera. All right, now, I'm not going to get in too deep with the camera and all that, but I will just give you my opinion on the camera. The camera on this... Is amazing okay now in my personal opinion we're gonna argue about this in the comment section I still think the Galaxy S6 camera is a little bit better when it comes to you know when you upload in the pictures now on the phone itself yeah it's gonna look nice on each phone but it's when you upload the picture to your computer upload it to Facebook or Twitter or something that's when you could really see the difference in the picture and especially with the low-light photos the Galaxy S6, I don't care about specs on paper, I don't care about megapixels and all that. The Galaxy S6 camera still looks a little bit better. Alright, now shout out to my man Dom Esposito. When we did that little camera test in the bar one night, we took a picture of a candle on the table in a dark bar. And the S6 camera, just it just looked a little bit better. Now I will say, when you play with the settings on this, when you go to your camera mode, the thing about this camera on the LG phone, yeah, you could just use, and now I'm talking about... When I'm, when I'm saying better pictures, I'm talking about just regular having the phone on auto, taking pictures. Now, one thing about this phone, you could put it on manual mode and look how many settings you have at the bottom. You got the white balance, the ISO, the shutter speed. There's so many things you can tweak and play with if you know what you're doing. And you could really make this the best camera out. But as far as just point and shoot, when you have it on simple mode and you just want to point and shoot, this camera to me is second best behind the S6. Now, look. If you're not into photography and you're not a big photographer and all of that, you're basically just going to use the phone on simple mode. All right, now, if you're on a date with somebody and you sit down at Red Lobster and you order the big lobster tail and you want to put it on Instagram, you're not going to be sitting there adjusting the white balance and adjusting the shutter speed and playing with the ISO and all of this crazy stuff. You're going to pull out your phone. You're going to say, hold on a second. Don't eat yet. Put your fork down. Take a nice quick picture of the big lobster tails. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna upload it to Instagram, hashtag wish you was here, you know, and, and you're gonna keep it moving, and that's it. So when it comes to cameras, this camera is a perfect point and shoot camera. You don't have to play with all those settings if you don't really want to, and especially for social media. Social media, when you're taking the selfies and you know all that crazy stuff, you don't really need to have the the official digital kind of you know camera quality you just want a nice quality cell phone picture and you're going to get it from this and another feature that this lg g4 has is when you're taking a selfie it's not a flash on the front but what it does is it makes a little square on the screen and it illuminates the rest of the screen 
So now I even tried it for myself. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you the picture because y'all know I'm not that selfie dude. But if you're in the bed, ladies, when you're in the bed and you're taking a selfie in the bed and you want to you know hashtag woke up like this. Now you could you could use the front facing camera and have a flash on. It's not a digital flash. It's not a a real LED flash. It's just gonna be a bright background with your picture in the middle, and it's really gonna make a difference. All right, so the camera on this, unbelievable. It's great. It's right up there with the S6. All right, I would now we could argue back and forth. Some people might say that this is better. Some people will say the S6 is better. I would say it could go 50-50. All right, 50 50, but both great cameras. The LG G4 camera is amazing. Next, you have a removable battery. That is hugely important. All right, now y'all know I'm going to get the Zero Lemon case in a, in a minute. Y'all know I'm going to get a bunch of extra batteries. I'm going to get the LG quick charge battery, you know, a battery charger. I'll show you that in a different video. So many options that you can have by having a removable battery. It just makes sense. It makes sense. Now, even with quick charge, even with walking around with battery chargers and all that stuff, nothing beats having a fully charged battery in your pocket. So when your phone, I'm talking about use your phone all the way up until you're on Facebook and you're scrolling and then the phone just shuts off on you. All you got to do is go open the back cover, drop in another battery, and you're right back in the game. No more looking for chargers. No more, you know, sitting in the airport next to the little charging stand and all that. You don't have to do that. You just have to spend a couple of dollars on the extra battery and you'll be right there. Also, you have a by having a removable battery, which means that you're going to have a removable battery cover, which is cool because, you know, in a minute, uh, all of these companies, let me see if I have one on deck. Okay, I got this one, the fly grip. You see now, if I'm using a fly grip, this is not something that I want to have on my phone 24-7 for my Galaxy Note 4. I don't want to have this fly grip on my phone 24-7, so what I did was I bought a different battery cover. So this way now I can have the fly, grip, the fly grip cover on here when I don't feel like using it, switch the battery cover, and now my phone is regular that I can put whatever case I want back on it. All right, so removal battery cover, that's hot because soon they're going to have the carbon fiber ones that have a whole bunch of different color leather. Right now i only seen, what, three different leather, uh, leather backs, but you know in a minute they, for the ladies they're going to come out with the pink, and then you know maybe they'll come out with suede. You know, maybe they'll come out with some of a, a different version of leather, maybe patent leather. Who knows? It's endless. It's endless possibilities. But the point is, it's possibilities. So removable battery cover and removable battery. Y'all know removable is one of my, my, my tongue tie words. Removable, <laughs> removable battery cover and removable battery. That's a plus. All right. Shout out to live videos. No editing allowed. Next. Now you also have a removable micro SD card. All right, expandable memory. Now, you could put a 32 gig memory card in here, 64 gig, you know, the one terabyte, whatever you, you know, whatever you got. One tega gig, I don't even, I don't even know those, all of those fancy numbers, but the point is, you could switch micro SD cards as much as you want. Now, to some people, that's not important. Some people like using the cloud for storage and all of that, but shout out to everybody who watched the Amazon Warrior videos. If y'all remember two weeks ago when Hollywood came and we were sitting down talking and we started talking about pictures, it's funny how you see him went in his wallet and he pulled out five micro SD cards that he had different pictures from years ago. And believe it or not, a lot of people still do that. It's mostly old school people. But a lot of people, including me, I have a micro SD card, 64 gig with 2000 songs on it. Then I got another micro SD card with a whole bunch of movies on it, a whole bunch of TV shows. And that's stuff that I don't want to I don't want to have to ever get rid of. So now, of course, you could buy those little adapters and just plug it in the bottom and all that. You could do that, too. But that's just more money to spend. If you're buying a phone that has removable uh, micro SD card space available stock feature, then that's less money you got to spend. So I got memory cards right now from my HCC Evo from five, six years ago, how, however long ago, and I could just drop it right in my G4 and keep it moving. All right, so that's a major plus right there. Also, matter of fact, now that we're on the topic of battery, let's talk about battery life. You got a 3000 milliamp battery in here that will literally, I say on beast mode status, I got about four and a half hours out of this. Now, that's right on par with everything else. Now, it sounds low, but that's pretty much on par with everything else. My Note Edge, my S6, my HTC M9, my iPhone. Every phone that I got right now, including my Nexus, after the update, the battery is definitely better. But once you go on beast mode status, and what I mean by that is as soon as you clock in at 9 o'clock in the morning, the first thing you do is jump on Instagram, and you're on Instagram all day. You're on Twitter. You're on Facebook. You're checking in on Foursquare, you're on Kick, 
You know, Snapchat all day long, nonstop. You don't even put the phone down. Depending on where you work, you might not have to put the phone down. Now, you could plug in and use a charger, but everybody knows it's not good to use your phone while it's on the charger. So just using the phone heavy duty like that, I was able to get a good almost five hours. Almost five hours off of one charge. Now, standby time on this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, I fell asleep. I had the phone. It was about 65%. I fell asleep and I woke up and it was at 60%. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, fellas, if you got a Galaxy S6, you know. If you fall asleep with 80%, you're waking up with 60% or maybe 50. You know, every phone is different. Every phone doesn't, doesn't sleep the same. But this phone has a great sleep on it. So battery life on this is a go. Next, the UI. Let's talk about the UI. Now, the UI on this phone is, is great. It's very similar to TouchWiz. Samsung's uh, UI, but this is kind of like how TouchWiz is supposed to be with no lag. Now, shout out to Samsung for the S6 being the least laggiest Samsung phone ever, but you're still going to get your hiccups every now and then. And that's why when I do these real reviews, I like to wait a little bit. I don't like to just get the phone on Monday and do a review on Tuesday because every phone fresh out of the box is going to be running nice and smooth. It's only after a few weeks is when you start to notice the hiccups and the lags after you got all your apps running and you know all your emails flowing in on a regular basis you notice that it starts to eat up more of your ram which this phone by the way has three gigs of ram lg's first phone with three gigs all right so lg they right at the top now you'll notice the lag as time goes on so i noticed with this phone i'm getting the least amount of lag and i love the ui on this now it has the feature you see i could just swipe down like this so you just want to see the time, just swipe down, hold up, am I doing that right? Yeah, just swipe down, hold the screen. More features with the UI, you got the double tap to wake up the screen. Now look at these animations. This is all part of the UI. All of this colorful stuff, all of this, you know, some people call it cartoony and all of that. But all of this stuff to me is just beautiful. Look at the weather animations. This is just beautiful. Look at when you're scrolling through your different home pages. You see how now this is fully customizable. I got it with this uh, in and out view like this, but you could do it accordion style. You could do it, you know, where the pages just flip upside down. So many features to play with. It's ridiculous. Also, you got themes now. So now you could change up all your icons, change up the, all the colors, your color schemes and all that. You could just go to settings, go to themes, just like HCC just added on the M9. Now you got real themes with full icon packs. Basically, the phone is almost like how you used to have to root it to get some of these features. You know, a couple of years ago, half of these features you couldn't change. You actually had to root your phone, even with stuff like Nova Launcher and all that. It was just, you know, minor, minor cosmetic stuff. But now with these new phones, especially like with the LG G4 and the M9 and the S6, you have real themes that change up everything. All right, so this is kind of crazy. Also, I talked about the not code. Now, I don't use that, but you see... You could double tap to wake the screen. Now, if you wanted to lock, if you wanted to have a passcode lock, you can have it where you have to knock a code in. Okay, so you don't have to put numbers. You can just knock your code in, which is important because fellas, um, you know nowadays these chicks they watching CSI and all of that. You try to use that swipe code and all that, they'll drop some baby powder on your phone and blow it off, and they'll see your swipe, <laughs> and they'll be up in your phone. All right, so that's 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 why at the beginning I talked about fingerprint scanner. That's virtually impossible for somebody to just open your phone. And the good thing about having a fingerprint scanner is you can put your password, you know, your backup password. It doesn't have to be something simple that you have to remember. It could be something so crazy and off the wall that you won't even remember it. And you won't have to remember it because it's not like you're going to grow new fingerprints. So you, you won't even have to remember it. Before, I used to use simple passcodes that, you know, anybody who really knows you, they could pretty much figure out your passcode with, a, with enough time and effort. But with fingerprint scanners, you're not going to have that problem. I just had to mention that real quick because that's, that's something important for all y'all cats out there doing dirt. That's, that's something that you're going to like. All right. Now, back to the UI on this. Really bright, really colorful. When you got your, you got your smart bulletin, you see now, this is kind of like, yeah, kind of kind of copying off of, <laughs> off of Samsung a little bit. But it is what it is. Kind of copying off of Flipboard. But this is, um, you know, like I said, I don't care about who's copying who. I want it to work. And this one works. And it works well. You see, I got my today's schedule. Got my music. Got the smart settings. We'll go over that in a second. Got my remote control. Because this does have the IR blaster. So I got my remote control on deck. It got a whole bunch of stuff. You also have the keyboard that you could change the height. 
that's a big plus all right so many features on this now another thing I know people might say too when I said I didn't like the volume you could change the volume using the on-screen keys and all that of course you can of course you can I just like to have the physical buttons on the side all right anyway I digress let's keep it moving real quick let me show you some of the settings why we end up why we talking about UI now it's a little bit different from the G3 now they broke it down to networks sound and notifications display in general no more just one long page of scrolling so let's go to uh, general real quick we'll go to smart settings so now you can actually set it up let me let this white balance balance out <laughs> you can actually set it up so I, I got these off because I don't really use these but you can set it up so as soon as you and it, it'll use your location also so you have to have location on but as soon as you get to the house it'll, the phone will know you in the house and it'll change to a different sound profile. So say you work somewhere where you're not supposed to be on your phone, you're not supposed to be getting phone calls and text messages all day, you, you set it up so as soon as you get to work, your phone automatically goes on vibrate mode. And as soon as you get back to the house, all your sounds pop back up. Same thing, so, you know, if you're not using Wi-Fi at work, then why have Wi-Fi on during the day wasting your battery? So you can set it up so as soon as you get in the house, the Wi-Fi will pop back on, and the same thing, you could set it up so as soon as you plug in headphones, it opens up your Amazon Prime Music Player or your Google, um, Google Music Player, whatever you want to do. But it's a lot of settings to play with. This phone is very customizable. All right, so you won't need to root this phone unless you're just a root junkie and you really just, <laughs> you don't want to just try out all kinds of different ROMs. But if you just want to really customize the phone and make it your own, you won't have to root it. All the settings are right there. Next, multitasking. Now this phone does have multitasking and real multitasking and what I mean by that is the split screen. Okay, so now now these are different apps you can open up at the same time, but let's just do the two recent I had together, which will be Google. I had okay, now look at this. I was on YouTube earlier. So I'm on YouTube and then I'm also on Google. Okay? And my cat just jumped on the table. <laughs> Shout out to the cat. Xerxes on deck. Anyway, once you do the split screen, you can switch them around. You can open up another app and have two apps open at the same time. Let's open up a Google Maps. All right, so I can have Google Maps open at the same time with another one underneath that. You can open up a full page. You can resize it. Resize it to the way you want or just close out one. All right, so this is real multitasking right here. Two apps at the same time. Now, I always say this. A lot of people think multitasking is open one app, hit the recently used apps button, open this one, hit the recently used app button, go back to this. That's not real multitasking because you're going back and forth. Real multitasking is doing two tasks at the same time. So I could be looking at Google Plus and looking at uh, YouTube at the same time. That's real multitasking. So multitasking on this is a win and it works. No S Pen, but it works. All right, had to throw that out there. If, you, if you're really looking for that 100% multitasking feel, then you're gonna need a Galaxy Note. Other than that, every other phone is, is, is comes second close to that. Next, let's talk about the speakers real quick. Now, even though the speaker is on the back, worst possible place, it is loud. All right, it's a, it's a little bit on the loud side, not the loudest. You know, now, if you're buying this phone specifically for being a media beast, you have you, you you know not using Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth headphones or none of that stuff. Just playing music and media directly from the phone. Then you might want to look at the Nexus Six. You might want to look at the HTC M9. Something with speakers on the front. That's going to give you that best media experience. But I will say this: the speakers on this, even though so you know no dual speakers, one one big speaker right there on the back. It is loud. And and keep in mind now the phone is the phone is kind of curved. All right, so it doesn't lay completely flat. So it won't muffle out the speaker when you got your phone face down on the table. All right, I'm feeling that. Now, one thing I forgot to mention with the UI too was the smart cards. I love the smart cards. You know, you read through them, all, you know, all my calendar events. Every now and then, different stuff will pop up. When your memory is getting full, you'll get a smart card that'll pop up asking you, do you want to you know, clean out your memory, close out these apps? Even some apps, I had this with my G3, some apps that you haven't used in months, You'll get a smart card alert that's saying, look, you haven't even used this app in three months. You sure you want to keep this app? You might want to get rid of it. All that little stuff is what's going to help you to not have lag on your phone. So that's part of the UI. I'm definitely feeling that. Multitasking, I'm feeling the speakers is nice and loud, just in the wrong place. Next, lag factor. Now, this is important. Y'all know that's the number one thing I hate about phones is lag. 
Okay, now y'all heard me say earlier, shout out to the Samsung with the S6. That's the least laggiest phone that Samsung ever made, but it still has its occasional hiccups. It still does lag out every now and then. Same thing with my Note Edge. Basically, every phone's gonna have a little bit of lag here and there, but when they're brand new, they all have zero lag. And right now, this G4 is still brand new, so it's still on zero lag status. The only time I ever seen it so far kind of lag out a little bit is, uh, let's see, when you go on, when you're on the app, let's say I'm on uh, Instagram. Let's open up Instagram. Say I'm on Instagram. When I hit the home button, sometimes it'll be a black screen and it'll take a second for the apps to repopulate. Now, it does that on this phone. It does that on my, M on my HTC M9. It pretty much does that on all Android phones. At some point, if you just happen to be in the app and you close it out too fast, go on Twitter or something, and you, and you close it out, okay, it's not going to do that right now, of course. <laughs> But um, <laughs> but sometimes you do that and you'll see a black screen and it'll repopulate. That's not really considered lag. That's just a little delay. Whatever. Lag is when you hit that multitask button and you have to wait a good 8 seconds or 8 to 10 seconds. Now, I'm not even exaggerating. Sometimes with some of these Samsung phones, you hit that. You, when you hit your recently used apps button, it might be a big delay. Matter of fact, let's, let's do a live test right now. Why not? Why not? Let's take it to the Samsung phone real quick. Let's hit multi. Let's hit the multi button real quick. Okay, so it didn't do it too bad this time. Like I said, the S6 is pretty much Samsung's best phone, but I do find some lag here and there with it. So far with the G4, I haven't had any lag. So on the scale of one to 10, 10 being super duper lag, I would give this right now a nine and a half. I mean, <laughs> I mean, 10 being super duper no lag all right so on the scale of one to ten that's why i don't be using numbers on my scale on the scale of one to ten ten being ten being no lag at all brand new phone fresh out of the box this will be a 9.5 because the phone is pretty much still brand new all right so we have to check back maybe in about two weeks now after been beating it through the ground if it starts to lag out but i don't really see it lagging too much because even the g3 didn't lag too much and i use that as my main phone for for months and months at a time and of course, now before we get out of here, last but not least, we got to talk about the floss factor. Now, what is the floss factor? If y'all never seen my videos, the floss factor is just like a, a, a way of saying the wow factor. Okay, what's the floss factor on this phone? That means if you got a brand new G4, you running around like you the man, and <laughs> these hap these things happen all the time. Now, fellas, you know what I'm talking about. You go to the bar, fellas, you at school, you at work, wherever you at. And you're hanging out with your boys, you're hanging out with the ladies, and they pull out the M9. You got your G4, they pull out the M9. Somebody got an iPhone, it's always going to be the Android versus Apple Wars. Then you're going to have somebody pull out the S6 Edge. All right, somebody's going to come out with a big Nexus 6. Somebody's going to come out with a Note 4, a Note 4 Edge. When you got all these phones around in one area, where do you sit? Are you sitting on top of the food chain? Or when all the heavy hitters come out, do you got to put your phone back in your pocket and go chill and wait for them to leave and then come back out and be the man? Well, with the G4, flaws factor on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best phone, the most high-tech, innovative phone out, I would give this one, I'd give the LG G4, I'd give it a solid 8. Now, the reason I say that is because you got your LG G4, yeah, you're the man and all that, but when somebody comes with an S6 Edge, now, y'all want to get into phone wars, they're going to tell you, well, look, I got wireless charging. Okay, you don't have wireless charging on your G4. They're going to tell you, I got a fingerprint scanner. You don't have that. Somebody's going to pull out their Note 4. They got an S Pen. You don't got that. So, you don't have every feature that's on the market and other phones do. So, therefore, your flaws factor is going down a little bit. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to accessories, you can bring it back up because now you go out and get yourself the LG watch to match with it. So somebody got their S6 and they got their gear watch. You got your G4, you got your LG watch. And that LG watch is nice. I'm probably going to pass it though. I don't really like the circle face watches. So I'll probably pass that one. But um, accessory wise, you got a bunch of accessories coming out. This is going to be a heavy hitter phone. So I'm pretty sure most of these companies are going to come out with accessories. Phones like the M9, sorry to say, as much as I love this phone, when you look online, it's... The accessories are scarce for this. You got the dot view case. You got the typical speed Spiegel and Veris UAG cases. But all of the big, you know, the big manufacturers and all the fancy cases, they coming out for the S6. They coming out for the iPhone 6. They coming out for phones that are selling. 
So hopefully this G4 starts selling good and um, these big companies come out with a bunch of accessories. But right now, right at the top, I would say Floss Factor on this is an 8. Alright, so that's how we're going to do it. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. I know this is a long video, but like I said, the point of this video is to let you know what this phone is capable of, what, it, what I like about it personally as be as being a phone lover what do i like about it and you got choices you got choices on the market of phones to get i mean we could do this all day we could sit back and talk about which phone has this what phone has that you got all of these phones to choose from you want to make the right decision now if you don't care about big phones if you you know a lot of ladies they don't want a big giant phone so you can immediately get rid of some of these phones <laughs> right out the top you could get rid of some phones right out the gate and then you got the smaller phones that's available so now you got to pick now we're not talking about Sony Xperia that's a nice phone too Windows got a few phones out Blackberry got a few phones out these are just my main heavy hitters so now you got to pick one so now if I got to pick one out of these four now even though the G5 is 5.5 inches that's some people would consider that big that's still not you know 5.9 6 inch that's still not the iPhone Note Nexus 6 size. So if I got to pick out of, out of these four phones on the table, which one would I pick? And to be honest with y'all, it would be between it would be between the S6 Edge and the G4. All right, so that, now we can narrow this down a little bit more. So now we got S6 Edge and G4. Now, if I only had to pick one, if I can only walk around with one of these phones, I'm be 100% honest with y'all, personally, I would go with the G4. And the reason I would go with the G4 is it's a little bit bigger. Y'all know I, size matters for me. It's a little bit bigger. The battery lasts a little bit longer. And it's a little bit less lag. That's, you know, and not to mention the camera's right on par. So same thing with, the, you know, both cameras are pretty much equal. I would just go with bigger size. All right, that's just me personally. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my S6 Edge and all that. But size matters. <laughs> Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what's your top five, top three, top ten phones that's out. Let me know what y'all think. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hit me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the Amazon Warriors Sundays. Y'all already know, Stream Gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, one more thing. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out.